is the National Cultural Foundation production of Bat Chance by Donatel Cox, featuring Harriet Vassal as Ma, Giovanni Ebanks as Dexter, Giselle Webb as Corrine, Patrick Lopez as Buddy, Priscilla Pucci as Wiggy, Leroy Holness as Wiggy's Date, Susan Watson as Mrs. Stanton, Isaac Rankin as Mr. Fredericks, and Jaron Carter as Freddy. Fat Chance is brought to you by the Ministry of Culture and Radio Cayman. Buddy, <laughs> you hear that man's trying to fix up Wiggy with some money, son? <laughs> she got her work cut out for her. I hope it is my mother only, son. What the hell you talking about, buddy? You don't have a brother. Oh, I get it now. What you want with Wiggy? She's a kindred spirit. Yeah, both on a what list together. No, man. It is more than that. I really have deep feelings for that woman. Me too. Deep feelings of dislike, mistrust, and I wish she were living deep in the middle of some gully. Man, Dexter, I would do anything to have her. To dream the impossible dream. To reach the unreachable Stop stars. Stop out of it, man. It's Wiggy you talking about. You owe me, Dexter. You owe me for putting me through that aerobics workout with Wiggy bending over in front of me wearing those tight tights. Stop it. You're making my stomach sick. She has made me sick. Love sick. Now your mother-in-law trying to marry her off to some stranger? You wasn't listening. She don't want to marry off to nobody. She waiting to find out what the plan is too. So there's hope for me. Shh. Stop making so much noise. You want Corinne to come out here? I really don't give two walk-ups who she marry as long as she stop coming out here and interfering in my affairs. Cause of her, you got to clear out my fridge. And every day now I got to do that aerobics foolishness. I want her out of my life. So promise me that if I help you to get her, you wouldn't bring her into this yard too often. I promise. Anything, Dexter. Anything. Just help me get her. Okay, we have to wait for Ma to make her move just as Corrine said. Then we'll make ours. And you know we athletic men. We move big. Hi, High, low, low, so we go. go. Ha, 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 ha. That is your mother-in-law coming through the door there now. Quick, let's hide to see if she say anything. The amount of talking she does, we could be here for hours waiting. There must be another way. Let me talk to her and work my charm. She'll sing like a bird. Jeez, some. Now all my seedlings on the floor. Oh, Nella give me a heart attack. What the two are doing in here? And buddy, why you look like the cat that swallowed the goldfish? Nothing, Ma. I was rendered speechless by your beauty. That's all. Are you taking extra vitamins? There is such a youthful glow about you. What you want, buddy? Make it believable, buddy. Not even Merlin the magician could make that woman good looking and she knows it. You just watch the master at work. Ma, let me help you clean up this mess. Here's the broom, buddy. Ma, where's the dustpan? Over there in the corner. Thanks. Ma, I was wondering if you saw Wigga today. As a matter of fact, I just came from cross by her. I went to visit her mother. Did you notice how lonely Wigga looks? I was watching her. I always, you know. With her living out there in the back, I like to make sure she gets in safely. But I don't let her see me watching. She might get the wrong idea. You mean she might think you spying on her? Yeah, something like that. Well, you are, you know. If you are going to watch every move she makes, that is called spying. And you know what happened to spies? What, ma? For not minding their own business, they get their eyes jugo. Well, now, you're gone and make another mess. Dexter, you and Butter will have to clean this up now. I go into my room to get ready. Get ready for what, ma? My business. If I tell you, it would have to jug out your eye. Way to go, Casanova. Now she know that we know something. Might be. But she don't have the slightest idea what we know. Let's just lie low. Something bound to happen soon. Let's go into the living room. Closer to the phone. How we gonna get there? I don't know about you, but since that exercise, I still can't get my legs to listen to my head. I know. <laughs> I can barely reach for the dustpan. <laughs> and now we're using that broom like a crutch. <laughs>
Why is the telephone never in the last place I leave it? I find the phone and left my glasses in the bedroom. She looking to call somebody? I hope it isn't any funeral talk. Get down behind the coach. She's coming back. Okay, now, let me find Mr. Frederick's number. Hello? Mr. Federicks, it's Angelina. How lovely to hear you. How are you this fine day? Very well, thank you. And you? Couldn't be better. To what do I owe this heavenly call? I was wondering if I could talk to, uh, to you about your son. Did he offend you in some way, Miss Angelina? Oh, no, he hasn't offended me in any way. Truth is, he impressed me quite a bit. As much as I have? Mr. Fredericks, <laughs> you are too much. Clearly not enough for you, Miss Angelina. Will he be on the island for much longer? He secured a good position with a private company, so he'll be staying here on for quite some time. Does he already have an apartment or a house? Oh yes, paid accommodation comes with a job. Excellent! I mean, that's good for him. He is self-sufficient. I know a young lady who would love to meet and show him around. Her name is Wiggy Stanton. Stanton? Stanton? Is she related to Miss Geraldine? Yes, Mrs. Geraldine's daughter. A good girl from a good family. I've never met her. Well, that will be fixed. I'm arranging a dinner for you before you leave. It would be a good idea if you were to bring your son along. It is so nice of you to extend this island hospitality to me and my son. The pleasure is all mine. Now, Miss Angelina, I have had to push my departure up by a few weeks, so I will be leaving the island by the end of next week. Oh, no! Anyway, that too can be fixed. Should we say tomorrow? I accept. I can't wait to see your lovely face. Oh, Mr. Frederick, you are too kind. 7.30? That will suit me just fine. I'll have to confirm that my son can make it. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Bye. Bye. So long, Miss Angelina. Nothing like a good old-fashioned dinner to get the sparks of romance flaring. And whenever he's ready, I am ready. What are Tuona doing behind there? You didn't have to be listening to Ma. We still trying to recuperate from that workout you and Biggie tricked us into. Yeah, what would he Why said? would I want to be listening to Ma anyway? You think I don't have anything better to do than to eavesdrop on her? What did you hear? What's in it for me? I'm getting the hell out of here. The last time something was in it for you, I ended up on the floor unable to move. Can you walk yet? Barely. But enough to get home. Dexter, when you figure out what is going on, call me. Come on. What did you hear? You and Buddy today discussing Wiggy? We were only mentioning her in passing. Don't even try it. I heard everything. Everything? Everything. Don't worry. This time I on your side. I met Mr. Fredrickson when I dropped Ma to church. He definitely not Wiggy's type. Is Buddy Wiggy's type? What you think? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, what did you hear just now with Ma's call? She having a dinner party tomorrow at 7.30 for Mr. Fredericks and his son. And guess who coming to dinner? Wiggy and her mother, you, me, and Ma. <laughs> she not playing. So, what are we going to do? First, we tell Wiggy about Mr. Fredericks' son. Then we prepare for night after tomorrow. Dexter, Corinne, don't make any plans for tomorrow night. We're having guests for dinner at 7.30. Corinne, please call the Stantons. They're invited too. I'm going out to get a few things for the dinner. See you all later. See you later, later Ma. Ma.
I got to call Buddy. I call in Wiggy. I got the phone first. Nope, I have it. Corrine, you didn't have to push me down. You fell, Dexter. Not my fault. Wiggy? Hello, Corrine. I call in to give you a heads up. Ma arranged for you and your mother to come over here tomorrow night for dinner. Okay. It's a setup! Dexter? Yeah, young speaker. Dexter just heard a call Ma made to Mr. Fredericks telling him she had a nice young woman for his son to meet. A half blind date. Half blind? Fredericks got to be half blind to be calling Ma lovely and beautiful all the time. Dexter? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, in this case, it only in one eye. The other one got to be blind. So, Corrine, how are we going to deal with this now? I have an idea. Come over, let me see how it could work. On my way. What do you have in mind? I have to prepare Buddy too. Ma didn't invite him, so hold off on Buddy for a while. One thing at a time. Wiggy is about to become larger than life. Dexter, answer the phone. Hello, Mrs. Stanton? Hold on, I can't hear a word you're saying. Esmeralda, something wrong with the phone. What is that horrible noise? Dexter's having his afternoon snore, I, I mean nap. She deaf in one ear and hard of hearing in the other and she can still hear him all the way next door? Oh. Not you. I was just trying to get Dexter to have some feelings on my eardrums. Is everything still on for this evening? Yes, everything is still on. What time again? 7.30. I was surprised at how easy it was to get Vicky to come. I believe she had an idea that somebody will be there, but she doesn't know who. Corinne, tell me that I mustn't try to find anybody for Vicky, but you can't teach an old dog new <laughs> tricks. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord Dexter, how a man can snore like that morning, noon, and night is beyond me. Oh, yes, sir. Listen to that. I can't hear what you're saying anymore. This rocket is getting unbearable. Besides, I have to go finish getting ready for tonight. Oh, okay then. I will see you later. Bye for now. Goodbye, Dexter. Dexter, wake up. Dexter! You don't have anywhere to go this afternoon? Cricket? Football? Something? Yeah, I have somewhere to go. <clears throat> Back to sleep. Corinne? Yes, Ma? I'm stepping out for a few minutes to get a few more things. Okay, Ma, you go ahead. And see if you could get that noise bucket lying down all day to get up and clean the yard by the back door. Remember Miss Stanton and Wiggy coming through the back tonight. Okay, Ma. Goodbye. You trying to rush me out or what? No, Ma. Just busy trying to get myself together for tonight as well. All right. I'm coming back in about an hour. Okay. Wiggy, the coast is clear. She gone. Get in quick and go straight to my room just in case she turn back for something. You sure she doesn't suspect something? I don't think so. But with Ma, anything is possible. We got to move fast. Okay, so what's the plan? Here, put this on. Mm-hmm. What is it? Take it out the bag. You sure this going to work? Just go and put it on. Where did you get this from? What the hell is this thing? This is the ultimate fat suit. Now hurry up and try it on before my turn's back. Corrine, Corrine, I just had a dream Ma was riding a bicycle up and down this road and yelling, Wee! What? It must be the heat. No, I think it was this belly. I'm hungry. What are you going to the kitchen to eat? Celery sticks, cauliflower. I said eat, Corrine. You want me to eat celery sticks and cauliflower? There's also good fruits and vegetables out there, Dexter. Go and help yourself. Wiggy? Wiggy? Will you come out now? 
I want to see how it look on you. I don't believe you talked me into this, Corrine. I feel very uncomfortable. Why can't I just be rude and call it a day? Because Ma will just make an excuse for you and continue to push you and that man together. You sure this going work? Anything involving Wiggy Stanton cannot work. Do not start up with me, Dexter. I would come out there and teach you a lesson. Teach me a lesson? Wiggy, what you didn't learn yet, I already forgot. There's nothing you can teach me. Nothing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I could teach you how to shut your mouth. Ah! Help! Help! The Hulk is alive! Corrine, get the broom quick! A shoe, some insect spray, something! Help! 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 Open your book because you're about to learn a lesson on respect. Wicked, no! Corrine, help! She going to kill me! She going to kill me! That's enough, Wiggy. Roll off a of Dexter. You going to kill him? He can't breathe. <clears throat> what, what the hell happened to you, Wiggy? You a mad cow disease, or what? My lord, Wiggy. What you do to yourself? You swell up terrible. I guess this means no more <coughs> aerobics for me for a long time. You're not getting out of it that easily, Dexter. We have an arrangement and we're going to still work out together. Right, Corrine? Right. This is only a costume. Fake fat. Your fat is for real. Talking about real, Corrine, you got real clothes for her or you going to wrap her up in a bed sheet? I not wearing no bed sheet. Don't worry. When I done with you, you going to look real pretty. When Ma see me, she going to think twice before she ever try to fix me up with anybody again. She gonna have to really think twice because he, you too big to fit in one tot. <laughs> Don't mind him. Come and take it off before Ma gets back home. Turn around and let me get this unzipped. <gasps> uh oh. What happened? Dexter, come and help me with this, please. What's going on behind there? Corinne, talk to me. Why should I help her after she nearly killed me? Because as long as I am in this suit, I still want to. Dexter, just help me, please. We're working on the same team, remember? Okay, step aside and let a man handle this. Wait, Dexter. Not so hard. Not so... <gasps> oh, no. If what happened back there is what I think happened back there, somebody better talk to me. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is that you broke the zipper. What's the good news? <laughs> Looking like that, you don't have to worry about getting married off to anybody. <laughs> this can be fixed, Wiggy. But we won't be able to do anything about it until after dinner tonight. You mean I have to stay like this all afternoon? I'm afraid so. You could stay in my room until it's time to come out. In meantime, make yourself at home. I'll do just that. I want some cool air for a few minutes before I go back into that bedroom. Dexter, make some room on the couch. Corey, help! <laughs> Bring me the napkins. They're in a cupboard next to the plates. Ma, you really taking this dinner too seriously. Next thing you know, you'll be organizing the wedding. I promised Mrs. Stanton that I would take care of everything. If we are lucky enough to get a wedding out of it, I'll help with that too. Remember, Ma, that you can't buy, hurry, or force love. You must wait and see if it happens. Uncertainty. That's the great thing about romance. Then not knowing, then finding out. They get taken too long to find out. So tonight, we will throw the two of them together and hope that they don't pass like ships in the night. Or sink like a ship with a hole in it. Get the door, Corrine. That is Miss Stanton. Good night, Miss Stanton. Good night, Corrine. Come in. Go straight to the kitchen. Mind there. Corrine. Come in, Dexter. Corrine. I come in, Ma. Corrine, what do you think she going to do when she see that her daughter larger than life? The question is, what is Ma going to do? Corrine, open the door. That must be Mr. Fredericks and his son now. Mrs. Stanton, excuse me. I have to change out of this old dress and fix my hair. Old dress? Who's she trying to fool? She just by that last week. You know how she is. Yep. 
That's why I waiting right here keeping my cell phone handy. I clear all my junk files and old photos off the phone cause I'm capturing the whole night. The good, the bad and the ugly. Strictly no pictures. I gave my word that there would be nothing left of this ordeal to blackmail anybody with. But I didn't make any promises though. Where Wiggy? Oh Wiggy! Open the door! Oh, not so loud, Dexter. Remember that her mother is here. You mean her half-deaf mother? Yes. What do you want? Are they here yet? Dexter Prophet! Dexter! How would you like it if somebody took your picture when you were stuffed out to 300 pounds? I wouldn't mind it one bit. In fact, I would pose and show them my good side. The buck! Get out of sight, Wiggy. You mustn't let Ma see you yet. But in there real hot. And there's not even an AC. The AC is on, but you so big the cool air can't reach you. <laughs> Dexter, if you don't stop with the fat jokes, I'll let Wiggy loose on you. Corin, what time is it? Half past the monkey's ah. Uh... Five minutes later than when you asked the time before. Just relax. I had a frightening thought, Corinne. What if I like him? What if he is Mr. Wright, the one I haven't been looking for all of my life? What if this guy is my once-in-a-lifetime soulmate? What if he If is... and when that bridge comes, we'll cross it. Or jump off it. Either way, you'll meet somebody in a few minutes and the ball will be in your court. Dexter, you're not wearing that shirt. What wrong with it? It clean? It all. I bought you a shirt. Here, put on this. Ma, this shirt too small. It look like a little boy in a hand-me-down. It will look better than that old thing you have on. Corinne, you hear anything from Wiggy? I wanted her to get here before the others so that nobody could see her coming through the back. You got all your wants downside up. Don't fool yourself, boy. I know exactly what I want, when I want it, and how I will get it. So don't worry about me. I got all my wants under control. I'm glad you think so. The only control you gonna have is the remote control. And now I go into the kitchen and control some of that food. This buffet looks so good. Rice and beans, sweet potato pie, turtle stew, conch fritters, fry plantain and macaroni pie, salad, what is this? Run down, Lord! <laughs> to think they want me to wait for Ma to release Wiggy on the unsuspecting public to finally eat real food. Dexter, put back every scrap. You're on a diet. Give me that plate. My belly already throwing one. Give me back my plate. I said I want back my plate, Corrine. Dexter and Corrine, you all have to do better than that. What will Mr. Frederick think if he show up at the door and hear the two on a getting on so? He would think that a man in here with a belly asking if the throat cut. Dexter, where's your willpower? I've been eating the same food as you, and I've been able to resist the urge to swoop down on that table like a Lego beast. Why is it every time you decide to lose weight, I have to pay for it? You starving out yourself trying to fit into a foolish dress to go to a what? A foolish dinner? To do a eat food. You think that my health plan is about losing weight to fit in a dress? Yes, and the last time it was a swimsuit and the time before it was some old jeans. You think that I went on a diet just to fit into those clothes? Yes, because as soon as you fit into them, I was able to eat in peace. Look, here's some money. Go go buy yourself a, a new dress and, and let me eat. That is a low down dirty blow, Dexter. You think that you could wave money in my face and expect to get... Corrine and Dexter, you gonna have to carry that argument somewhere else. The others are here. Corrine, just for tonight, let him eat what he wants. Dexter, stuff you got till you bust. But the two are on a better... Not ruined tonight for Wiggy. For Wiggy or for you? I'm going to the door, and when I bring the Fredericks in here, I want to see the love oozing out of you. You hear me? Yes, yes ma. ma. Miss Stanton, I come in. I think the others are at the door. When you say Wiggy going to get here? Listen, Corrine, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings about this diet thing, but it got me on edge. I dream about food night and day. 
I know how important it is for me to drop off some of this weight, but you have to give me a chance to work it off on my own pace. I guess I'm pushing you so hard to keep myself from falling off the wagon. Why do you think I've been trying all these different weight loss programs? It's because I haven't been able to stick to one thing. It's a good thing that I'm not a weight loss program, huh? I guess so. Come here, you big sexy teddy bear. Now that's what I'm talking about. My darling wife a, and a proper plate of food. Mm. What about Wiggy? What about Wiggy? She hasn't had anything to eat all afternoon. Well, she'll soon get a chance to change that. Wiggy? It's me. Open the door. It looks like the others are here. Mai's gone to the door. Where's Daxter? He head deep in a plate of food. Give me a quick bite now. That might be a bit close. And your mother is here too. Ma keep asking her when you are getting here. With the heat in this suit, if I don't get something to eat, I might not be here at all. Whatever happened, don't let her faint, you hear? I can't lift her up. She would have to get rolled out, and I don't think the floor could take it. <laughs> Dexter! <laughs> oh, shoot. They're inside. That's to get rid of that plate of food. I can't eat that fast. Give it to me. But I just... But I... Here, take this quick. Quick, Wiggy. Now get back in the room and don't come out until I give you a signal. You know it yet? No, but when the time comes, you will definitely know it. I'm so sorry that your father couldn't stay for dinner, but these things happen. Come in and meet my daughter and son-in-law. Corinne, Dexter, this is Mr. Frederick's son, Frederick. I'm Dexter, Dexter. I, I, I mean, Brathwaite. Call me Freddy. Pleased to meet you, Freddy. I wish Ma had told me more about you. Excuse me? Oh, don't worry about it. I say the craziest thing sometimes. She take after her mother. It runs in the family. Come on and get something to drink. There is another person coming, Miss Stanton's daughter. She's someone in particular that I want you to meet. I know you two have a lot in common. Let's join Miss Stanton at the bar. Corinne, since when did Ma get a bar? And Frederick, Fredericks. What kind of name is that? Something not going right. That is not the same man I saw at the church the other day. This one is... Ooh la la. What are you saying, Corinne? This is Wiggy's worst nightmare. The man of her dreams. But his worst nightmare too. Oh, Corinne. When is Wiggy going to get here? She's our neighbor. The one I told you about. She and her mother live next door. Ma, why don't you take Mr. Frederick? Freddy. Yes, why don't you take Freddy out on the porch for a while? It's cooler, and you could see Wiggy arriving. Good idea, Corinne. So tell me, Mr. Fredericks. Call me Freddy. So, Freddy, whatever happened to your great aunt from Honduras? The coast is clear. Wiggy, open the door. I had to lock out Dexter to keep him from taking pictures. Where is he? Where is everybody? Outside on the front porch. Good, I'm starved. Those wings and ribs were very good. I have to get a few more. Wiggy, Wiggy! I don't want to hear anything from you, Dexter. And you better not be taking any pictures of me. Ah, uh, Wiggy! I mean it. No more fat jokes. I had enough. What is this? Corinne, what going on here? Uh, this is... Um, Wendy. Uh, yes, uh, Wendy. Uh, Wiggy's twin sister. But I don't have any Please more to meet your acquaintance, Wendy. Unfortunately, I heard all about your sister, Wiggy, but not one word about you. He kissed her hand. Charmed, Wendy. Why wasn't I told about you? Yes, she's a big secret. Classified. How can the world be deprived of such a treasure so pleasing to the eye? Come, you must tell me all about yourself. Let's go outside on the porch. There is a full moon out tonight. They would have to be a full moon to explain this. Who was that? And where did she come from? You got poor Miss Stanton confused now. She only have one daughter, and that is Wiggy. Now what is going on? And where is Wiggy? Out there with Freddy. That can't be. No! That can't be. Ma! Ma! Now look, your mother passed out. 
You and I on the same team, remember? I only have one child. I only have her. Dex, I catch her before she... Look, I got her. At least she laid it in the two tons of fun outside on the portrait, Freddy. Let's get these two on the couch and give them some water. I got some smelling salts. Pokemon is the right to model in people's affairs. I had everything under control, nothing was left to chance, and now, what a mess! Ma, things don't look so bad. After all, when he saw Wendy, he didn't pick up his feet and run. He stayed, and they've been talking for a very long time. So he's not just trying to be polite. True, he's not trying to be polite. He just mad, that's all, mad as a hatter. How could things have gone so wrong? I can't begin to explain this to Miss Stanton. What will I tell Mr. Fredericks? Why do we have to tell them anything? Freddie and Wiggy are two consenting adults. Let them deal with it. Now that you figured that out, could we eat? Don't touch that food. The guests have to eat first. But we got already started. That don't count. But the food getting cold. You want guests to start eating the food? I go and get guests. Hello, buddy? Yeah, Dexter. The party done? Far from. You eat yet? No. Well, come over. Buffet, all you can eat. I come in. Tell me that you didn't call Buddy Jones. All right. I didn't call Buddy Jones. Liar. You just tell me to tell you I didn't call Buddy Jones. This is my dinner, and I didn't invite Buddy Jones to it. This is my house, and I say he can come. Don't forget that we have guests on the porch. Fat woman and maniac are your guests. Buddy is mine. Yeah, buddy. I'm here at the back door. Well, you can't knock like everyone else. I come in. Where's the food? Over here. Buddy, what are you doing buzzing around my table? That food is for my guests. I'm Dexter's guest. Did Miss Stanton get anything to eat yet? I don't know. She's still out here sitting on the couch. Wait, that is the man out there with Wiggy? No, he's out there with Wendy, Wiggy's twin sister. What? Long story. Eat, eat. Where are you going, buddy? By the window. I won't hear what he's saying. You're such a charming person. I'm glad that your sister was tied up this evening. How else would I have met you? May I call you again soon? I don't know, Freddy. I, I haven't been myself this evening. I'm afraid I wasn't very good company. On contrary, my dear, I must see you again. I find you hugely fascinating. We really should go inside. We've been chatting for quite a while. Time just stood still tonight. Yes, it did. Shall we? We shall. They coming back inside. Sit down here. Dearest Ma Wellington, Miss Angeline, I am eternally grateful to you for having led me to Wendy. All I can say is that the Lord moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Amen. Dexter, thank you for your hospitality. I would shake your hand, but I hold in ribs and wings. I don't think that we've met. The name is Frederick Fredericks. Just call me Freddy. But is buddy. Uh, just call me buddy. Wings and ribs, wings and ribs. Freddy, aren't you going to stay and have a bite to eat? Ma was preparing all day. I would love to, but I have to get back to my father. We're dealing with a bit of an emergency. I fixed him a plate for you to carry for him. Corinne, please fix another plate for Freddy. Okay, Ma. I put one out for Miss Stanton, too. This is for you, and this is for your father. Thank you so much. I must say, I had a lovely evening. I hope this won't be my last. Uh, might as well be. Easy, buddy, easy. I must be going. Ta-ta, darling. Good night, everyone, and Miss Angeline. Thank you again for your hospitality. What a night! It looked like your matchmaking plans pulled together, Ma. I underestimated your ability. You is a boss. 
Freddy get fix up good. Three women for the price of one. Where you get three from? Well, we give one and when these two. Dexter. Nothing you say can make me feel bad now, Dexter. I'm on cloud nine. Ma, Corrine, I think for the first time in my life, I'm in love. What? Life isn't fair at all. I have been trying to get Wigget to take me serious for years now. And that man come along and ruins everything in just a few hours. That man had real talk. But there's something about him that just rubbed me the wrong way. And it has nothing to do with you losing Wiggy. He's just a little too smooth. All I know is that he is a thief. He steal Wiggy away from me and fill up her head with a lot of foolishness. I got news for you, boy. Wiggy don't exist anymore. Wendy has taken over. That is true. Do you know that Wendy called the police for me? He tell them that I was stalking her. Say that I follow her and spy on her and thing. Dexter, I was going to do what I always do. Checking to make sure her and her mother was all right. She got Freddie now. He who tell her to call the police on me. Hey, not only you getting that treatment, Corey not see Wiggy for the whole week. When they always here and she here to meet that puppet Freddy. So what we going to do? I not doing nothing. Enough people already put their hands in Wiggy business and she don't even know who she is. She wearing a fat suit day and night. She ain't went to work for the whole week neither. She take an indefinite leave of absence. From she senses. <laughs> Every word out of Wendy mode is Freddy. Freddy this and Freddy that. You see how Freddy got Wendy pulled away from her closest family and friends? And doing no foolishness? Now even I call her Wendy. How is her mother taking it? She is convinced that it is only a stage that Wiggy is going through. What about Ma? You know all this thing is her fault. To tell you the truth, Ma acting like everything is alright. She don't acknowledge that Wendy even exists. When Freddy calls or comes over, she's still talking about this wonderful woman called Wiggy that he must meet. So Ma going off too? It looks so, boy. The only person not getting any good out of this whole ordeal is me. Wiggy's not around to bother me. Corinne and Ma let me eat what I want. And you so depressed about Wiggy, you can't even beat me in a game of dominoes. <laughs> I got to go inside now. Time for that damn workout with Corinne and her new friend Wendy. I can't come and watch? Buddy, you understand what a restraining order is? Yes. But Wendy is not a true person. If you want to test out that theory in court, come inside then. If you won't be out of jail if Wiggy ever come back, you should go home now. I hear you, Dexter. I will live to play another day. Got to make sure I'm here for Wiggy. That sound like a plan. Dexter, time for your workout. I come in just now. Buddy, I warning you for your own good. Do not even look inside that side window. I don't want to have to bail you out of police lockup. Go inside. I going straight home. Okay, let's get this over and done with. Okay. Wait, Wendy, Wiggy don't need to exercise anymore? How long has it been now, Wiggy? About four weeks. Do you realize that this is the longest that you have ever stayed in a relationship? <laughs> what relationship? <laughs> Wiggy not in anything with anybody. Wendy is the one that the man got sweet eye for. Wiggy, how can you keep up in that ultimate fat suit? Stamina and sheer willpower. I gotta get used to wearing the suit for longer periods of time. Fred is spending more and more time with me. You mean with Wendy? You mean you haven't told him about Wiggy yet? Corinne, if you were Wiggy, would you want somebody to know about you? I'm going to be Wendy until I'm sure he's in love with me. Then I'll tell him about Wiggy and go back to normal. <laughs> it's funny though. You killing me to exercise because you think I too fat. And you afraid you're going to lose a boyfriend because you're not fat enough? <laughs> Whatever happened to just being yourself? All my life I've been myself and all it's gotten me is a string of Mr. Wrong. Well, for once in my life, I've got Mr. Right. No, no. Wendy has Mr. Right. Dexter, mind your own business. Talking about business, what exactly does Freddy do? He has to have a large bank account to even contemplate taking you, I mean, 
Wendy to dinner. For your information, we don't do the regular dating scene. We avoid places like restaurants and nightclubs. Freddy, not as crazy as I thought. He don't carry you out where anyone could see you. <laughs> Freddy is not like that. He is very health conscious and the idea of being surrounded by fatty foods and alcohol is just abhorrent to him. But you like going to those places. Used to like going to those places. You've given up an awful lot for someone who doesn't even know who you really are. He'll know in time. It's then that he will run. Hey, hey! First it was two, now it's the three of you unfairing me. I don't have to call back up for you, you know. And he right outside. That better not be. But it Jones. Somebody call my name? Oh, that man gets on my last nerve. The police told him to keep a hundred feet away from my house. They didn't say anything about staying away from my house. If you don't want to see him, you could always slip out the back door. <laughs> if you could fit. <laughs> I would come cross there and lick. <laughs> abuse! Abuse! <laughs> Butter Jones. Why are you popping up at my front window like that? You look like a, a stalker. Wiggy, I was just speaking to Mr. Fredericks and he hinted that Fred is popping by to ask you something. When? He's on his way over now. Now? Yes. Oh my God. Corinne, this could be it. The proposal? Proposal? Ah, oh, buddy boy. Who will accept Wendy or Wiggy? Wiggy. It looks to me like you have a big decision to make and no time to make it in. Fred is outside. And buddy gone. Ma, how much you pay for that noisy broom? Not a penny. It was a gift. Mr. Fredericks bought it for me from America. It is called a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Uh, I know what it is, but you sucking up dust from over here and blowing it all over the place. Dexter, Ma says it got a very good HEPA filter. Well, it blowing dust and HEPA all over the place. Dexter, try come help me move the couch. I want to vacuum under it. Corrine, why you don't go and help Ma with this? Can't you see I'm eating? Are you really hungry? I was talking to Mr. Fedrix this morning. He says that Freda has something very important to ask Wiggy. You mean Wendy? I mean Wiggy. It is Wiggy that I set up, and it is Wiggy that's getting proposed to tonight. Proposed to? Tonight? Hmm. I believe that when I see it. I thought that was going to happen the other night and last week. Well, maybe it's just another important question. What other important question can it be? Maybe... When do you want me to come over tomorrow night and not give you a proposal? Stop it, Dexter. Or, my darling, Wendy, let me hold your hand so I can beg you to sit next to me and never on my lap again. <laughs> or, or, please don't mash my toe. <laughs> Enough, Dexter. Ma, when is he coming here this time? Any minute now. And Wiggy? Wendy. Wendy. Wiggy is coming over too. That sounds like her at the back door now. Corinne, please go let her in. You sure she can fit through? <laughs> Hi, Corinne. Hello, Ma. Hi, Butterball. You are one tough bird. Dexter, don't start with me today. What? All I did was compliment your feathers. Corinne, I need you to answer a question for me. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Go yeah. ahead. Privately. Of course. Let's go in here. Corinne, do I look all right? You've been getting real good with the makeup and the clothes, but it's getting harder to hide that you're losing weight. Come by the mirror. Look at your eyes. They sunk in. And look at the strings in your neck. Your collarbone could hold in soup. You can't keep this up much longer. You're losing yourself to this man. Just one more night. All I need is one more night. Corinne! Tell Wiggy that Freddy is outside. Okay, Ma. Wiggy, I'm not telling you what to do, but for weeks another woman has been with the man of your dreams. She's the one who told him she loved him, and she's the one whose hand he holds and whose eyes he stares into. Don't you think I know that? You know how hard it is for me to change into Wendy every day just to be with Freddy, the man that I love? 
It's like I'm cheating on myself. So why don't you end this? Because I'm afraid that I will lose him. But you never had him, Wiggy. He's Wendy's boyfriend. You do not exist. <sighs> well, what do I do now? The truth has to come out before he pops the question. What if he doesn't want Wiggy? If he can't handle the truth, then he doesn't deserve Wiggy. I've never felt so comfortable, so safe, so adored by a man before. He listens to me, and he's demanded nothing from me in return. Yes, he has. This fat suit. So what should I do now? Just take it off and be wigged tonight? It has to happen sometime. I think Wendy should have the chance to say goodbye. I think he deserves that. That might be a good idea. I don't think I will ever find another man like Freddy Fredericks. You're probably right. But you'll find love. I'm sure of it. And love may be closer than you think. Corinne, tell Wiggy her guest is here and she had to rescue him from Dexter. Okay, Ma. Thank you. Tell Freda she's coming out soon. Tell her not to keep the young man waiting much longer. So, Wiggy, you ready to say goodbye to Wendy? Not really. But if Wiggy is here to stay, Wendy must go away. Bye-bye, Wendy. But help me to understand, Freddy. How do you make the money? It look like you're not working a real job, but you're getting paid a real high salary. It's not what I do. It's how I do it. Hello, Freddy. My darling Wendy, I've been looking forward to seeing you all day. Come sit here next to me on the couch. There's something I must share with you. Dexter, can you please move so I can sit next to Freddy, please? Sure. Let me move over a little bit. You have enough space now? If I move over anymore, I can burst through the side of this chair. Well, go sit somewhere else, Dexter. Like in the kitchen. I believe she wants to be alone with Freddy. So why they can't stay outside on the porch or, I don't know, go to her house? Dexter, I believe somebody's at the back door for you. Come, Dexter. I need help in the kitchen. See you later, Freddy and Wendy. The moment of truth is at hand, and I want to see who's going to get slapped with it. Let's go, Dexter. But I, I must... have to listen to the radio for some information about a funeral tomorrow. I think your father is supposed to be going to that one. Corinne, flip that big cockroach over there in the corner. Okay, okay, I go in. Come along, Dexter. Freddy, I have something to tell you. Why won't you let me hug you? I couldn't keep myself away any longer. Wendy, Ma, I... Ma, Corinne and Dexter, can we have some privacy, please? Yes. Can I have some privacy with Wendy, please? Wendy, I have something to tell you. Me too. Let me go first. My heart is bursting. I can't wait any longer. Corinne, he just got down on one knee. What? It really happening? What you doing now? Calling, buddy. No need. I'm already here. How you do that all the time? Just show up when I call in you. Shh. Wendy, I know that we've only known each other for a few weeks, but I'm in love with your body and soul. I want to be with you day and night. I want to hold you, squeeze you, mold your flesh between these hands and never let you go until you- Yes! Yes, I'll marry you! Marry? No, no, no! I want to be your personal trainer. Excuse me? My what? Look at yourself. You are a beautiful woman trapped in the body of a large chocolate marshmallow. I'm not fat. You poor soul. You're in denial. You need a hug? You don't have to be shy with me anymore. Come here, my sweet Wen Wen. Oh, so soft. I'm going to have a grand time giving you muscles of steel. I'm not fat. I've been wearing this fat suit the whole time. You're not what? You, you're skinny? You led me on all these weeks with a facade? I can't believe that you lied to me like that. All I ever wanted was someone that I could sculpt, transform into a thing of beauty. Wendy, how could you do this to me? My name is Wiggy. You even have a skinny name? You're nothing but a liar. You are the liar. I did intend to scare you off by putting on the fat suit, but I kept it because I thought I had finally found a caring, genuinely nice man who would love me for who I was and not just what I look like. Boy, was I wrong. I allowed you to get between me and my friends and family. Stop spending time with Corrine. Put the police on, buddy. I've been such a fool. Wendy. The name is Wiggy. Let's start over. 
Wouldn't you put on that suit and we could forget that it's ever? What? You must be sick. You had better find a door. I'm not leaving until I see you as a beautiful fat woman again. Get off of me, you pervert! Don't run, my darling. Let me love you and turn your beautiful blubber into a six-pack. You're a sick man, Freddy. Take your hands off of me. You hear the lady? She said to leave her alone. If you get up, I gotta bust your head. Wiggy, you all right? Wendy. I told you three times already. My name is Wiggy. Yes. She named Wiggy. Freddy, meet Wiggy. Skinny Wiggy. Restaurant loving Wiggy. My Wiggy. Where did you come from, buddy? I was here all along. I never left you out of my sight. Young man, your father will be very disappointed in you. Take yourself outside of my house. I said move it before I give you a karate chop. Taya! I could have given you anything you wanted, Wendy. I could have been the man of your dreams. Fat chance of that. Fat chance. <laughs> You're mad. You're all mad. <laughs> Buddy, I looked into a mirror this afternoon and I didn't even know who was looking back at me. I thought I had it all when I was with Freddie, but I didn't even have myself. Here's a mirror right now. Look at the two of us. Does this complete the picture? Do you think you have it all now? To be honest, buddy, I'm not sure about us yet. But I'm so glad to see Wiggy Stanton again. So does Buddy Jones. Buddy, I think you should walk Wiggy home through the back. Make sure she get home safe, okay? Wiggy, if I walk you home, you're not going to call the police on me over there, right? Will you? It depends. On what? If you try to steal my heart. Corinne, now that Ma gone out and Wig and Buddy not here either, I want us to sit down on this couch the way Wendy and Freddy used to. Dexter, what are you getting up to now? Come, sit. I just want to tell you thanks. Thanks for what? For loving me enough to harass me about my eating and exercise. It was either you or me, honey. I needed the help too, and your being there reminded me of how I started out and how important it was for me to keep at it. You inspired me. What's that noise? I don't hear anything. Listen, can't you hear my heart beating at a better resting rate? <laughs> so you've really gotten into this fitness frame of mind now. I'm proud of you. Next thing you know, you'll be training me. I guess you just have to put your mind to it. Thank you, Mr. Frederick. I had a wonderful time. No, no, I don't want to wake up the others. All right, but this is the last time. Good night. What are you two doing up? Waiting for you. It seems as though you had a real good time with Mr. Fredericks. I take it he's nothing like his son. My word, no. He is the perfect gentleman. A very nice man. I just saw Buddy and Vega going round the back. I'm so glad that he waits for her after work and makes sure that she gets in all right. It's a pity they don't get into a serious relationship, though. <laughs> they look pretty serious to me. I didn't hear any laughing. Well, children, good night. Good, Good night, night Ma. Ma. Do you feel like doing some aerobics tonight? As long as I don't have to do it out here with a DVD. Let's see how fit you really are. Race you to the bed. How'd you get in there before me? Okay, Dexter, you win. Come, aerobics time. Help me put the mattress on the floor. No, don't lie down as yet. Turn off the lights. Oh, no. Gotcha. I love you. I love you too, Corrine. This has been the final episode of the prize-winning comedy Fat Chance by Donatel Cox, produced by the National Cultural Foundation. We hope you've enjoyed this Caymanian arts and culture broadcast that has been made possible with the generous support of the Ministry of Culture and Radio Cayman. 
to hear the entire production again, you can listen online on CNCF's website, www.artscayman.org slash productions.